part of the Earglue Media family of podcast. You're listening to the Cantina Cast. Your home for thought-provoking Star Wars talk. Join Adler and Jonesy in breaking down the latest news, trailers, movies, and of course, your favorite characters from a galaxy far, far away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cantina Cast. My name is Albert Padilla, and this is episode 305, The Rise of Skywalker, The Final Hype. This is the show before the big show. We will uh, finally, this again, will be the last show before the main movie comes out this Thursday. And hopefully we'll get our editor to crank this out for you ASAP. Although, no, you know, no, no promises. But uh, joining me live from the red carpet is none other than our very own Jonesy. Jonesy, welcome to the show. And how are things looking there in California? They are looking still very sunny because I think it's still sunny there. No, it's not. It's like 930. Well, you're not there. Oh, wait, no, no, wait. Yeah, no. And it's blue carpet, right? Not red carpet because is that's it blue? a thing. I don't know because Rise of Skywalker know. is bluish. I don't know. Okay. Very auspicious start for us here today. I am not at the red carpet, <laughs> by the way. Oh, <laughs> I was going to really try to help. I was hoping we could just, you know, lead them on. and But yeah, nobody would have believed it. So nah. no, no, really. How are things going? <laughs> They're going well, man. I'm excited for this. Uh, finally getting the movie here this week. Feels like it's been forever. It was never going to get here. And now it's just, uh, man. It's blazing at us at 100 miles an hour, and I yeah. keep having to pinch myself that the movie comes out this week in just a few days. Hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, so we're recording this on Monday, December 16th. So this is the same. This is the night that they are doing the red carpet premiere. Um, as we were recording this, there are it doesn't look like the movie started. Or still, I'm seeing a lot of pictures of the celebrities, you know, arriving in the pictures of their gowns and their tuxes and, you know, typical fanfare stuff. But does this get you excited for anything? Is this like do you follow this stuff? Cause I can tell you right now, I don't, it's the, I don't really care too much for it, but it doesn't, you? Yeah, it doesn't really do much for me either. It, I don't know. It's kind of nice to see everybody in one place though. I think for anything, it's nice to see all the actors and even, you know, I went in, in past releases, we've had George Lucas and other people show up and, I think it's always fun to see who is there to watch the movie because right. you kind of want to get their idea of what it is after the fact. And the the formal or the, the final push will happen, of course, first thing tomorrow morning with another round of interviews and just a, a deluge of every single show on under this under the sun for the next uh, two or three days. But it, it doesn't really do much for me, to be honest with you, except it's kind of cool to watch the Twitter feed and and see what's going on where I don't know some people really get into this stuff though but yeah yeah, absolutely no they do um and they were they did release just kind of speaking of they did release like the I don't know where this came from but the official invitee list for people that were part of the film special guests and then guest directors and filmmakers right and um I didn't see George Lucas's name on here now that's not a I'm sure that's not a a thing at all. I think if he really wanted to go, he goes and it, I think it's kind of understood that he will be there. Um, but there are some interesting people on here. Like, you know, Steven, there's some people you'd expect like Steven Spielberg and Dave Filoni, right? Uh, they had like Spike Lee is one of them. Lawrence Castan is on here. John Favreau. Um, yeah, a, a pretty solid list. looks like everybody from all of the current shows, whether it's resistance, Mandalorian, you know, they're all going to be there as well. So right. the Star Wars family, if you will. Yeah, exactly. A lot of voice actors, which is kind of cool too. So Ahmad Best is on here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you get, yeah, you get past folks too, but you, is Ewan McGregor on there though? Um, I don't, I don't remember seeing his name. Don't see his name. I don't, I got super excited when I saw Zoe Deschanel there though. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now anyway, so yeah, so this is, uh, it's going on right now. I would like to see if maybe George Lucas does show up, but you know, that seems like he's kind of a, he's been at every other one so far. So I would imagine he's going to show up to this one as well. I got to be honest. The one thing I do get excited about these is to see what kind of props they bring out because mm. usually, I mean, we've seen this in Times Square and, and, and I think in California as well. Sometimes they'll have a giant X wing or, or something big that is just, you know, a nice eye catcher. I think some of those are a little bit fun to see. That's about the most excited I get about it though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's always good. And then I like some of the questions too, that they ask them, um, 
at this at this point we're just we're done, right? We've already asked a ton of stupid questions. Us being, I guess, the media. I'm not part of the media, but there's just been so many questions. I mean, the press junket's been hitting pretty hard here the last two weeks, so there really isn't anything that has not been asked of them yet, whether it's related to the movie or not. And my, my question would point, be. How done are you answering Star Wars exactly. related questions? The same questions over and over again. And I can <laughs> seriously, some of them have just been absolutely ridiculous. I mean, absolutely embarrassing that they've, they've asked uh, some of the cast members, these, this, these types of things. But, um, you know, there's always usually one little good nugget here and there from some of these folks. But anyways, um, so yeah, we're not going to really do any other news than that uh, simply because we've only got two days left and, Hopefully you'll be able to, we really want you to be able to kind of listen to the show prior to going into uh, the rise of Skywalker and, you know, kind of set the mood, set the tone, no pressure. So with that, we're going to roll right into it. And if you were, were with us on episode 304, we had a chance to kind of break down some of the dark side characters, both the new and the returning characters. And I say dark side, the evil guys, whatever you want to call them, because they're not all force sensitive in any way. Uh, and this time we're going to do the lighter side characters, <laughs> the light side characters, the good guys, and kind of maybe touch on some final predictions and uh, maybe just general predictions here at the very end. But before we get into all of that, let's start with something pretty simple. Um, and I don't want to be, a, I don't want to crunch down a hundred numbers here, but I thought it'd be interesting to just kind of get your thoughts on where you think this film's going to land from a box office perspective, because we intend to come back after the movie's been out a few weeks and, and start talking about, okay, is it up? Is it down, you know, relative to uh, predictions and expectations, that kind of thing. But, you know, this is a kind of a unique film in a lot of different ways and actually many, many ways. Uh, the least not being the final film of a nine movie saga. And, you know, the, it's wrapping up a trilogy and, you know, there's a lot, there's huge, huge pressure and the, ex, you know, expectations are just through the wor- roof right, right now at this point. But with all that said, do you think this movie's going to land more or less where Last Jedi did, Force Awakens? Do you think it's going to do less? What are you looking at? Yeah, I think that's the, the question a lot of hardcore fans are thinking is, is it going to do better or worse than The Last Jedi, right? Because they're concerned or maybe curious is more the, the better word of what the, the fallout from all of the fan dissent there was uh, from that movie and whether mm-hmm. or not it's, it's been able to recover, but really that kind of goes to some of the casual fans too, and how well they've been able to energize and, and excite people for the last movie. And I can tell you uh, this past weekend, I was visiting some friends and no joke, two thirds of the people in this place were talking about star Wars. And I don't, think that it's because star wars everybody's just a star wars nerd or whatever you want to call us but i think it was just you know, there's just been so much out there and people are getting excited that it's hard not to believe the movie isn't going to do really really well and uh, what did last year i do like 1.33 billion at the end of the day globally yeah something like that yeah so i i think it does I think there's a chance for it to go north of that. I don't think it's, it's not going to hit anything near force awakens. I don't think even with it being the last in them in the, in the saga, I, I still don't think it's going to do that, but I think it's going to do it enough to drive a better box office performance than last Jedi, but it's going to have to do it. I think it's going to have to do it really in that first weekend. It's got to have a really solid weekend and, but it's got to keep it going throughout the holidays. It's really got to bank on these first two or three weeks here and uh, really capitalize on the, on everybody being out of school and a lot of people being out of work and, and go yeah. on that route. But where do you think it's going to fall? I don't know. I, I almost think it's, I think there's two paths or I guess two factors in this that will ultimately determine how much money it makes. I think the first factor is just the general audience and maybe even the critic reception, right? If it's, if it's a highly reviewed and um, highly reviewed movie, that tends to bring in just a number of folks uh, on its own merit, right? If, if if you have a movie that's at 99%, 98% on Rotten Tomatoes or, you know, in the 90% on Metacritic or whatever rating system you want to follow, that in itself brings in just a number of people that may not even be really interested in the movie. They have maybe have a slight interest, but because it is in that, of that caliber, uh, you know, again, this is assuming this is a widely um, and consistent reviewed movie. 
that it's high. I think that brings in a subset of people, a specific group. That's one factor. The other factor I think is really um, kind of boils down to whether or not this movie is able to kind of deliver on what it's, you know, it's set out to do. Does it wrap up the trilogy? Does it wrap up all nine sagas? Um, is it, uh, is it a movie that we can all get behind, whether you're on the side of, you know, the last Jedi versus the force awakens on the side of the prequels versus the original trilogy or the original trilogy versus the sequel trilogy, right? I mean, there's all these different factions within star Wars. If this is a movie that has something for everyone and everyone can walk out of this feeling united, uh, whether the movie was good or not, that we got something out of it, uh, depending on where our fandom is. Then I think that plays a role into it as well. I think if you had both of those going for it, then yeah, I think I could see this thing doing more than maybe The Force Awakens, especially when you factor in the global market. But I'm with you. I don't know. I think it's going to be hard. That's going to be hard to hit. Yeah, um, Force Awakens was such a phenomenon when it came out. and Exactly. Yeah. But even if we look at that as kind of the basis, so I, I like your point about the review. I don't, if it's a seven, seven and a half movie out of 10, I think yeah. it can, I think it still achieves, I think in, in the, the ballpark about what you were, kind of the direction you were headed. It has to be, I think, solid. It doesn't have to be great in order to do really well, but it needs to be really solid. And to your second point, are there going to be two or three or maybe four major points in the movie that are must see, right? You, you have to see it either for the visual spectacle or it's a key story point, something like that, that really energizes the base and that they want to, they feel like they have to go and continue to see this thing over and over or go see it for mm -hmm. the first time when maybe they didn't, they, they didn't think they were interested, but now they're hearing about, you know, these, these handful of scenes and the way that they did it, that, that really energize even the casual base to go out there and, and see it if they were on the fence about it. But I don't think you have to have a super high rating or, or review from the critics or whatever, because we saw the last Jedi had, you know, very high critic reviews early on and, and then things kind of got a little wonky, but it, I think it just has to be solid because Force Awakens was a bit like that. It was a little over the top and then it kind of dialed back to something that was just more solid and people still accepted that and really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. So I see your point, but I think it's, man, it's really hard to get what, to really hit that number that, that uh, Force Awakens did because it was just so, everything just straight, it was like lightning in a bottle and it's, it's difficult to recapture that. And third movies and trilogies are, are a little bit of a hit and miss type of thing about how well they do. You know, Jet Return of the Jedi didn't do quite as well as Empire Strikes Back, but we've seen other franchises who have had a slight uptick in the closing chapter rather than than another decrease. So it's a little difficult to predict in that in that area. But I think again, last movie in the saga, seeing it go north of Last Jedi, I think is probably a bit of a safe bet, even if the movie is is not as well received as uh, maybe we hope it would be. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Okay, well, that's all we're going to dwell on. We're not going to. Er that's as much as we'll dwell on it, at least for now. And we'll come back at some point when we do our, you know, all of the number of shows that we do after a movie release and kind of just touch base and get an update on where it's going, where it's trending, that sort of thing. So uh, let's roll into characters. And I thought we'd start with, let's start with the new characters and then we'll kind of, I want to touch on some characters that we maybe get some predictions from you on whether or not we think we'll see some of the characters that we've already seen in either the first or second movie. And then we'll finish with the actual returning characters that we know are going to be there and then talk some predictions there. So for the new characters and this, we'll start with the easy one. So Dio and Babu freak. So if you're not, if you're not familiar with these characters, Dio is the little robot that's got the cone head and the one wheel and Babu Freak, it looks like he's going to be another Baby Yoda. He's super cute looking. Looks like he's about, I don't know, maybe 12 inches tall, if that. And um, the official, and this is not a spoiler, officially on the StarWars.com website, it says that Babu Freak is, um, I guess he's like a, a droid technician of right. some sort, a creator of droids. And I, th I guess they're paired up in some way, him and Dio. So I'm, I'm kind of lumping these two characters together, but... Do you think they're going to play a significant role or are they kind of just utility characters that for a specific purpose or cause? Well, we've seen Boba Frick in the scenes with C-3PO, right? So we know that there's some sort of correlation in all of that. So he's, he's instrumental into the story, but beyond that general scene, and it's probably about it, right? And we mm -hmm. get little yeah. flavors of Dio from some of the cast of, you know, they're super cute and he looks up to BB-8, whatever that actually means. I don't, I don't know. 
Yeah. But, I mean, literally, he looks up to him. Well, yeah, because he is smaller. Smaller than BB-8. <laughs> well done, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, people will probably fall in love with Baba Freak, if, especially if he's got some unique type of voice to him. And I mean, right. the, the look itself, yeah, people are already going bonkers over Baby Yoder. So <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to slip that in there. But yeah, it's just yeah. another one. But if Baby Yoda wasn't around, this guy would probably get a lot more popular. But sorry, Baby Yoda's king. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um, what about this Claude character? Because he's one that this is that <laughs> early uh, on. Yeah, everyone got so excited about looking it. slug thing that they released <laughs> early on. I mean, he was all over the place, and like you know, we saw pictures of them. I saw today somebody was somebody's already selling like a full size cutout of him. And now the rumor is he may not even have made the final cut. They may right. have cut out those scenes. I think we saw him in in one of the TV spots briefly. Yeah, I think he was riding around in the Falcon at one point with Foe and Foe. There we go. There you go. Every every week. Every <laughs> freaking week. Um, no, um, Poe and Chewbacca and everybody else in the Falcon, he was sitting in the, in the back there at one point. But um, I don't know. Again, I don't, and I we, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this character, but I mean, he looks interesting enough. He looks disgusting enough, but uh, I don't know that we're actually going to see him anymore. Yeah, I mean, these characters that get you from point A to point B or... or they they segue the story or they they come in and out. I mean, we they're, they're, we couldn't have expected a whole lot from some of these characters, and for for some of these moments to end up on the cutting room floor to be rearranged or repositioned shouldn't be surprising. So seeing this character really early on and then basically evaporate from ninety five percent of all of the content we've seen isn't necessarily surprising. Early on, we we had this was like Force Awakens too. Remember all the characters that would come out because there was maybe an actor behind it or something like that. And yeah, they weren't always important characters, but maybe they had some scenes or, or something like that. And it's just more, I don't know, pe- getting people interested in something and just getting something out. And Claude always struck me as one of those characters. That's going to be a casualty of all of that. And I, I wasn't super enthusiastic about him anyway, because again, we've got a lot of movie to get through here. And exactly. I don't, I don't need a lot of the the fluff and the froof and all of that other the words that you have for making fun of things. Uh, I don't, I really need that type of character in the movie to, to keep it moving. So if he's there, cool. If not, or if he's there, I hope it's minimal anyway and, right. and kind of get out of the way of the story in general. But yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't expect to see much of this guy. And I don't either. I mean, he's trending to be the next, you know, constable Zuvio. So <laughs> good luck to you, buddy. Yeah. Um, so here we go. Let's get into some, I guess, meteor care. So, so Jana, Jana, we've spoken about her right. before. We know she's in the movie. Um, I mean, I guess, what are you expecting from her? I guess, what are you, you have any predictions around what you hope to see from either her or this relationship that seems to be implied uh, in the TV spots with Finn? Well, she looks like kind of a badass. I got to be honest. I'm just kind of looking to see what she does. I mean, she's, yeah. she's in enough of the, yeah, she's in enough of the pro- promotional material now that she has a prominent role in the movie. We see her with a lot of our main characters. So there's, there's something there. I, I temper expectations a lot with, with characters we get introduced to because, and we're going to see this maybe with Zori Bliss too. If, you know, how much can you really expect for them to, to flesh that character out, to be meaningful in the story when you've had multiple other movies of building up these other characters. So we have to temper expectations a little bit there, but I think she's been in enough of the promotional material. We know she's in a big chunk of the movie. It looks like that, yeah there has to be something interesting there and whether, whether it's a uh, Lando connection or there's something, you know, brewing with Finn or whatever that might be. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what that looks like. But I, I'm excited to see just because she looks like a cool character. I'm just, I just want to see what she does and how, what her part is in the story. What about you? Yeah. Yeah, no, me too. Um, I liken her to an Infus Ness type of character. Yeah. You know, she's probably going to play a, a, a particular role uh very supportive role um she's a badass as as far as you know some of the shots and what we've seen so far i think if that all plays out then yeah i think that'd be really great and um i think later on i want to do i kind of i, I do want to talk about maybe some we could talk about some predictions about where we think we may see some of these characters later on or if we see some of these characters later on either movies media that sort of thing and she's one of those that i would throw in there that Maybe there's a backstory there or some side story that we get in some format with her if, if it turns out that she is a, you know, really likable character and a very interesting character like an Infus Ness. I don't think there's anybody out there right now who, if they announced anything related to Infus Ness, wouldn't just jump all over it because it's just that intriguing and we didn't really get that much of her. And I kind of hope that this is the 
the same path that we're going to see with Jana. I just hope they deliver on it and we're not waiting here, you know, almost two years later for something to manifest from that. And, you know, right. with regards so, to like what. So we have uh, to do a live or die yeah. for her. <laughs> um, yeah, we do need to live or die. I'm, I say live. Yeah, I um, think so. I don't, uh, you know, it, it, there's certainly plenty of characters in Star Wars that appear and never come back. But I, you know, she seems pretty cool, uh, at least visually. So I'm going to guess that she's going to live. In fact, let me just, sorry, I forgot to put that on here for her. But um, I would say Dio, Bubble Freak, um, and Claude. <laughs> Claude. Claude. They all live. If he survives the editing if floor. He sur- <laughs> if he survives the cutting room floor, then yes, I say he lives. So maybe we should transition to a similar type of situation as Ori Bliss. Right. So this yeah. is the, you know, she looks like a bounty hunter. She's got some, she's again, she's in a lot of the promotional material. She's in some of the the spots. We see her on the planet with whatever's going on with C-3PO with the red eyes and all of that. So is this a character that we think we're going to get a lot, maybe not backstory, but we're going to get some sense of who she is and where she comes from or, uh, or is this more of just keeping the story moving in a certain direction? Yeah, I think we were going to get a little bit of background on her. It would be, uh, I think we'd be remiss not to do, to get that from them. Um, but I, I don't, I think it's going to play a huge role. I think that there's going to be enough there that it'll be intriguing and because of her look, it, because she's in that outfit and it looks very unique, um, I think it looks great. Um, I This is a character that I strongly feel we're going to get something on and, and more from a visual than maybe a book, right? So whether that's a TV series or an animated series or she's a returning character in an animated series, or, I just think this is kind of, there's a lot of room and potential here for her character to come back visually because they don't need to, you know, land the look every single time. It can be, even if they went with live action, I mean, there's always that opportunity too, or they do a back, you know, some kind of um, Cassie and Andor type thing where they go back to fig- give us the, the context and the history on who she is and what got her up to this point and all of that. So I just like the look. I, don't, I think it'd be a waste if they didn't capitalize on it in some way, in some form down the road. Right. Um, and beyond that, again, there's, there's only enough time, right? There's only two and a half hours here. And we got a lot of new characters. We got a lot of potential storylines. I just don't think we're going to get too much from her as well. I think we'll get enough to really like excite us and make us like her and make us want more. And that's going to be about it. How about yeah. you? Yeah. And I think the comparison with Emphasis Ness is really good. Cause if we really think about what Emphasis Ness, like what we actually got from that character, aside, it really is all at the end of the movie. We didn't really get a whole lot of that character at all. Mm-hmm. Except for the visual aspect that she played throughout the, the you know, for, throughout the rest of the movie as a kind of a soft antagonist, right? But I, my expectations are pretty low. I think this is going to be a character that's going to move the story along a little more than get anything rooted in it. I would like to see something though, because I agree with you. The look that they've created for this character, I think a lot of the, we, we've talked about the uh, the costume and the uh, intricacies of some of the, the carvings on it seem to have some sort of, you know, special meaning or, you know, something there that's, that's interesting to, to talk about and, and learn about. But so I hope that's not wasted, right. To where they just kill off the character or it dies in some crazy way. But again, is she going to be instrumental throughout the entire story? That's a little tougher to answer. And I, it, if she's a bounty hunter, why would she stick around? I guess is part of my, my question. So if she's not a bounty hunter, then okay, then you can recruit them and maybe they could stick around for the rest of the story or unless we're going to go with this bounty hunter with a heart thing all over again, which is happening a lot of. But so that, that's kind of my general prediction. I think she will probably leave the story before the end is my guess. But she mm-hmm. lives. I think she lives though. Yeah. I, the only thing that I would, that makes me wonder if she, if she's going to live is there's a moment in one of the trailers where uh, Poe is screaming no and he's screaming at the top of his lungs and I don't know. And, and I do know spoilers. And so I want to disclose this. Um, this is one of the ones I don't know. I really don't know much about her character from a spoiler perspective. Uh, there is a rumor and it's been rumored in like public forums, not like in spoiler channels or anything like that, that she has a history with Poe. Um, I think it was one of the interviews or something that was done maybe about a month ago that came out. If that true, if that turns out to be true, then, you know, maybe that's, him screaming because she, her ship blows up. I think there's one cut of the TV spots where you see a ship, you know, get blown up. But right. I think it's an X-wing, X-wing if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, an X-wing uh, on fire without a wing plowing into 
something yeah. that's going to finish it off. And and I think that's I think that's meant to mislead us because everything we've seen so far from her, including the Lego set, is uh, Y wing that she maybe maybe flies a Y wing. So right. I don't know. Who knows? But um, that would be my only. The only thought I'd have as to whether or not she were to die, but I'm going to go with Liv as well for for her. Okay. Uh, which leads us to, I guess, the final quote new character, and he's by no means a new character, but Lando Calrissian is back, as we all know. And um, again, I don't. Uh, this one is this one's really hard for me because he, there's definitely a hole that I think his character is trying to fill. Um, some of the characters we're going to talk about, whether or not we see them pop up again. But, you know, when we last left folks or last left The Last Jedi, they were in really dire straits. They had, Leia had sent out the distress call. Nobody answered, including Lando Calrissian. And so from that perspective, I, you know, it's, it's, I'm guessing he's going to be back in that capacity. He's going to be a returning hero, um, you know, senior leadership type role that, that, you know, with Holdo gone and most of the um, resistance forces kind of decimated as a result of The Last Jedi, they kind of really are in need of some just veteran, seasoned, well-experienced type people. And I think this is where Lando Calrissian comes in. Now, what I don't think he's, I think true to his character, he's probably not going to stick around and want to be a strong integral part. Maybe he's been there for the last, you know, six months to a year. Or maybe he's just now showing up. Either way, I don't think I don't think he's in here for the long run. I think he's here to do whatever he's got to do. And then he, after this is all over, he's going to move on and go on to his next gig, if you will. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited to see the character. And again, we've talked about the L3 connection. I want to see him fly the Falcon. We've seen that in the trailer. We've seen the TV spots. But uh, whether I'd like to see him kind of lead a battle again, like we saw in Return of the Jedi, that would be kind of cool. So what about yeah, you? Yeah, I think, well, I, man, the one thing I think we want to see is, how does he get back involved? But is there some way that they've been able to craft an interaction with Leia? And to have some sort of moment between them, either to acknowledge Han or, or to have some kind of carefree moment or something like that to bring those two characters back together in some way. And mm -hmm. I, I think, and, and not really for any purposes other than that. And again, it kind of keeps giving us closure a bit on, on, on the real life people that have gone away and some of the characters that have gone away. And uh, so I think that's where I'm interested with him. And yeah, it, to him to step into the leadership role, I think is important. But how do they do that and who recruits them? And do people really care at this point about some of these old heroes? It'll be interesting to see what that dynamic is. And they might skip some of that stuff and just say, yeah, oh, wow, it's Lando. And he was instrumental at the Battle of Endor and all this other stuff. And that'd be great. But get an idea of where he is. And yeah, if he has a moment with L3, that would be kind of cool. But the question, Albert, does he live or does he die? Sounds like you uh, think he, he lives. lives. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, it's Lando. Well, and you don't have to kill off every every historical character, every original trilogy character, right? I mean, yeah. it's okay if, if some live. We don't have to completely erase the past or, or kill off the past or end the past, whatever you want to say. Just because the saga's ending doesn't mean only the new people can survive. So I think right. Lando's one of those guys. He just, like you said, he's a survivor. He finds a way out and on to the next uh, cherry gig. <laughs> so we've got uh, live, live, live. Um, we skipped over one character and... This is uh, Dominic Moynihan's, not, is it Don, Monaghan? Monaghan, did I, I say that know. right? Is he going to be in, I think we just spent more time talking about him than he's going to be in the movie. Beaumont Kin is the name of his character. Ugh, never trust anybody with a city for a first name. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Beaumont Kin. So that is his character's name. And I don't know. This is another, he, he, he does feel like it's a, Hey, I like Star Wars. Do you have a role for me? Sure. We have this character here. Does he have a name? No. Uh, how about Beaumont Ken? Sounds good. Where can, when can you start? I mean, that's, it seems like this is how it all played out, right? And he's now got a role in the movie. I don't think he's going to be an integral uh, part uh, of much of anything. Uh, he seems to be connected to Rose from the TV spots. I mean, it looks like a lot of his scenes, or at least the, what they, what little they've shown, seem to be all around what I'm guessing is kind of like either in the middle, second act battle or towards the very end, the finale kind of thing. So, right. I love Filler, the guy though. I yeah. The actors. I love him. He yeah, we, great. yeah, we do. He's been in you know movies that we love, of course, but most likely probably a bit of a, a filler role, but maybe a recurring filler role that he's present. Right. Yeah. And do we, do we care if he lives or dies? <laughs> mm, nope. I'm going to say die. Just, just cause we have sure. nobody, everybody's lived so far. Or we did. Or, yeah, sure. Okay. We'll go with that. 
or, or we would never go back to him to even know what he what happens to him. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably yeah. more likely to happen. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some returning characters that we saw pop up in um, either the original trilogy that we know are still around or um, just recently in like The Force Awakens and not in The Last Jedi. But this is uh, I've got Wedge and Snap and we can throw more in there. I mean, it'd be great to get like a. Sh- uh, what's his name Shiv and all the guys from like all the characters that we met up with in um what is that uh Battlefront Battlefront, oh, Battlefront. is it Shiv or Shriv Shriv sorry not Sh- I was about Shiv to say Shriv. Shriv's something different buddy yeah no <laughs> um yeah Shriv uh but yeah there's a lot of characters in there and we saw Lando in there so we knew what he was doing something with the with the uh the resistance and kind right. of working side gigs and helping them out but um but yeah, there's a lot of characters, but I focus on those two because, you know, we've seen them obviously on the big screen already. But like Wedge, do you think we're going to see him back? And what about Snap Wexley? We we get him back at all? I hope we see Wedge because I think to your point earlier, it'd be great to see another in the field type of character and in the field, you know, you know, historical character come back and someone that we really, really like. And there's a relationship with Snap, of course, through his mom and well, a kind of a mentor relationship already. But of course, romantic involvements with uh, Snap Wexley's mom in the books and the aftermath uh, books in particular. So I think, I think Snap has to, I mean, we know he, we know Snap is back, right? Cause we know, uh, well, I keep from her, Greg, uh, Greg Grunberg, we know that he's mm-hmm. in the movie, right? So we know Snap is back and I think Wedge is back too. It, it, all signs seem to point to that, that Dennis Lawson is going to reprise the character, at least in a small role. And I think that's uh, fun and exciting. And I think there's a pretty good chance that, you know, both of them survive the movie. I think so too. And I don't even need, I don't even need like scenes with these characters. Like if we get to the battle, what appears to be some like, you know, massive battle where they've collected anybody and everybody that can just show up to take on, you know, cis troopers and the number of Imperial star destroyers that we see kind of, you know, uh, across the sky there in, in some of those TV spots. If we see him leading you know, a group and that's all he does. He just shows up and they're, you know, they're all calling in and then every one of those call-ins or every other one of those call-ins is like a cameo of somebody like really famous. I think that would be really super exciting. And that's all they, and they can throw in and I'm going to, I'm now I'm going to really steal some of the thunder later on, but like they throw in like a Kaz or, you know, uh, uh, the Sindula for, from, you know, riding in the ghost and, um, you know, all these other characters like Wedge and Snap and all those guys, if they did that, that would be great if just to have them, you know, have them like see their face, have them say one word calling in their, their call sign. And that's all we got. I'd be okay with that. I think that'd be a great way to not necessarily, you know, do fan service, but, uh, you know, make those people happy like us who tend to follow all of these different characters and, you know, love them and follow them and all that. So, well, here's something else I would like to see that both of these characters would be who would contribute to directly with Poe as well. And then maybe even some of the characters that you point out is Black Squadron. So I want to see Black Squadron be the premier squadron for the resistance. Mm -hmm. In the, in the Legends material, we had Rogue Squadron, right? And in the original trilogy, we had Rogue Squadron and it was the elite. It was the, the best, you know, they Wedge and Luke and whoever else. I would really like to see in our space battles that we have, that we have a group of pilots that really are, fantastic and that really are something special as a unit with you know great leadership with poe and and of course with wedge's contribution and snaps as well i think that would be really fun to see on screen even if it's only for you know a minute or two you know something like that i think it would just be really cool to finally see that and get some sort of visual representation of the amazingness of of certain squads in the resistance for slash rebellion type of era of pilots maybe the so while we're doing predictions what if they called out the aces or there was at some point they mentioned the aces or we get to see them. Maybe, they, we, maybe we don't even see their faces. Um, and I'm saying all this, I'm getting excited because you know, uh, what's his name? The guy that plays, uh, Kaz, Chris. Yeah. Uh, McPherson, whatever. I'm, I'm terrible. With things. <laughs> yeah. He was on, he posted a picture today on Instagram of himself in what looks to be a very elaborate Kaz costume. And, uh, there, you know, it obviously sent a lot of people, uh, a lot of women and and men swooning first off. But then once you got past that, you started, well, like, why is he doing this? Why is he wearing this? Was he, is he trying to hint at something potentially that he's going to be in the, uh, the uh, rise of Skywalker 
So I don't know. Maybe it would just be neat, if, to, to your point, if we had a Black Squadron called out or we had them call upon the Aces or we even saw the Aces, um, you know, doing some just, I don't know, as part of the battle. It, again, it'd be a great way to kind of tie all this together. Although we've, you know, we've never done it. They've never tied across the streams, if you will. So and, it'd be unprecedented, I guess. It'd be cool if they did, though. And I, I think Kaz is probably the most likely of, of anybody. I don't, I don't expect to hear any of the Aces, but... We know the Kaz connection with Poe. We know that the, he's flown X-Wings before. So at least it seems like a natural connection. So, and yeah, and he's a cool guy. Yeah. Chris, Chris is. God, I can't believe we can't remember his last name. That's terrible. We well, follow him that up. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> let's talk about, uh, I got another character on here. So let's, we're getting into the returning characters and it's not really a character, but I, I put the Millennium Falcon in here. Gasp, um, not a character. I mean, it is. Half our audience just lost their minds. I know. Sorry. All right. I just meant it's not a person. It is definitely a character. And we talked about this again. How is it not a person? Droids are people too, Albert. (laughs) No, they're not. Um, Oh my God. (laughs) I don't even know you anymore. (laughs) We, uh, we, so to be fair, we did talk about the Millennium Falcon in um, the uh, solo Star Wars story uh, as a character. Because it does have a personality. And, um, you know, it's, it's notorious, you know, blow that piece of junk out of the sky. That's still one of my favorite lines from the last Jedi. But, um, I don't know. Is this, uh, I guess my, my big question is who's it going to end up with? Well, I'm kind of, who does it go to at the end of the movie? I think the real question is, does it survive? (laughs) And man, I hope it survives. I want it to. Um, yeah. Who does it go to at the end? I don't think it goes with Lando. Sorry, Lando. Yeah, I mean, it's still got to, if, if Chewie survives, I guess it's got to stay with Chewie and it's just a matter of who's with Chewie. Is this a, is this a Poe and Chewie thing or is this a Ray and Chewie thing or is Chewie and his Porg friend? I don't know. Peter but the Porg. I, yeah, Peter the Porg, whatever you want to call him. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I just want the ship to survive. I don't necessarily care where it goes, you know, and I want Chewie to survive too, spoiler alert. Right. You know, and, and for them to be together and then whoever is is with them, you know, and I don't see Lando necessarily taking the Falcon back, but I would, I would, I kind of think it's going to be Ray and Chewie who ends up with it. That's my guess. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with the, uh, I'm going with Lando and Chewie. I think Lando gets the Falcon back. I think he's reunited with L3 and that's kind of a, and even if they don't touch on it or, you know, elaborate or dwell on it in any way, it just, we all know that they're together again, as weird as that may sound. Um, I think Chewie is married to the Falcon as much as Han Solo was. I mean, that's, that's been their ship for so long, but uh, it would be neat to kind of see. And I'm, and I, I don't even need to see it. I just, the idea that together they're now doing it, they're often doing adventures is a, is a really cool, I don't know, thing for me. So I, I think, it, I think it does live on. I do think it goes with uh, Lando. If it doesn't, then I think the question becomes is if, you know, who, who gets it and who start are they going to start up a new crew and, and that kind of thing. And maybe there's characters that we aren't thinking about. Maybe there's new characters that are introduced and who knows, maybe it's, you know, uh, Charlie from lost Dominic Monahan's character that goes over and, and joins him. Who knows? So me, it's Rose. Yeah. Let me dial this back to reality. What if they don't answer it at all? <laughs> what if, what if it's not clear who quote unquote ends up with the Falcon? I think that would be, does it matter? Well, I mean, does it bother I, you? It bothers me. Because <laughs> it's just one of those things. The it's, one, like it's, it's the one question you have to have answered out of this movie. Who's I know the it's the only thing I'm going in for. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's one of those things with the Falcon. Like it's um, there's a precedence here that's been set that it it gets handed off from person to person, and it's usually Lando or and or Han Solo or you know uh, whoever. But um, you know, it, it's not going to make or break me. I guess if it doesn't happen, but it'd be disappointing. All right. On to the droids. How about BB-8, 3PO, and R2-D2? We going to get a heroic moment for BB-8 or R2 this movie? Yeah, I think that's kind of the, uh, that's his thing. He's already had one in every movie um, that he's been in, BB-8. So, excuse me, I think we're in for another variation of a heroic moment for BB-8. Um, as far as C-3PO and, and BB-8, I think lives on. I mean, he's just kind of the future droid. He's right. R2 of of our generation, right? The, uh, as far as C-3PO and R2-D2, that gets a little tricky because I am still convinced that C-3PO gets his memory wiped, um, in some way for some reason. And 
I, and I honestly don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what happens. I don't know if he gets reset to a certain period in time. Uh, I think we mentioned on either this show or the last one, I would like to see, I think it'd be hilarious if he was reset to like the very beginning or a long time ago and he does not remember what's happened over the course of the last 20, 30, 40 years or whatever it is. Um, I think that would be pretty, pretty funny, especially if R2 continues to not be, you know, continues gone as he is. Um, but beyond that, I think he lives on. I think R2-D2 and C-3PO do continue to live and neither one of his is decommissioned. I just, I'm going to chalk R2, I'm going to chalk C-3PO up as dying only because he's going to get his memory wiped. See, I kind of hope that 3PO gets his memory restored with everything in it, including who his maker was and, and things like that, that R2's kind of been storing it all along and mm-hmm. he's finally able to replenish it with his, with his pal. And we've seen the TV spot where TV spot where there's a bit of a moment between C3PO talking to uh, R2 as his best friend, which I think is really cool to finally see and hear that uh, more overtly than maybe we already feel. I mean, we know that they're important to one another and they, I guess they, they care because droids have feelings, Albert. I don't know if you know this, but droids yeah. do have feelings. Makes them people too. I know. Yeah, good. Do they you know? Color too. I, I, I don't even know. Anyway, but so yeah, I, I think they survive. I mean, for 3PO not to make it out alive, he's going to be blown into a bit. And even then, you know, we've seen him survive that too. Multiple times. That's right. But I, you know, but I hope that there's a, I hope there's some sort of moment that R2 gets to, you know, quote unquote, be a hero or save the day a bit, even though it's most likely going to be relegated to BBA. But we, I think we want to see R2 still have that moment again with his, you know, as much as he, as, as big of a role as he played both in the prequels and original trilogy for him not to have something or, or to at least contribute and help and him and BBA have kind of a tag team, you know, back to back partner moment, I think would be pretty neat too. I'd, I'd like to see that. I think more than anything else. Um, yeah, I do. I do see, I can't wait to see that. Um, my question, I guess, is in the TV spots, we see Poe flying an X-Wing, uh, X-Wing, and he's got R2 in the back with him. And, you know, we've up until now, it's always been BB-8 belongs to Poe, and, you know, they flew together, and you've got to think that they had kind of that same special relationship that Luke and R2 did, but... Now that you have somebody like R2, you've got somebody like Poe, it's almost like you're pairing up the best droid, you know, astromech droid that's ever lived in, you know, what well, I guess maybe the, the best pilot, pilot that's ever lived. I'm not going to debate all that right now, but at least from this trilogy, that seems to be the case. But I think you've got two of the best going into an X-Wing pilot, and I'd like to see them just kind of play off each other and and work with one another. That would be interesting, but it just leads me to wonder, okay, so where does BB eight land up or what does he end up? Is he end up with Ray, which I think is probably the more common thing, even though he does belong to Poe. I think at the end of the day, I think he's, he's got to go with her because they started together, right? They started this whole journey together. Um, you know, there's just some, there's something very sweet and poetic about her having a friend like BB eight and, R2 going with Poe and that's kind of where they end up. I, don't know. I like it the other way around. I'd rather see R2 end up with Ray and BB-8 go back and hang with Poe because they're BFFs. From life. I haven't even considered R2 and Ray. Yeah. But I like Poe. I like BB-8 better though. Oh, oh well, fine. You've drawn <laughs> your battle lines. All right. I've drawn this. But they all live. Everybody lives. All right. So far. Man, nobody's dying on this side. Nope. Everybody's got to live. Or do they? Here's Rose. <laughs> yeah, Let's Rose. talk about Rose. Um, man, sparse, man, sparse so it's far, right? Really, yeah, it's been a, a a barren wasteland in terms of what we've seen with about with footage with her, and I don't know if that's uh, any indication as to where her you know her character ends ends up, either you know from a storyline perspective, whether she lives, dies, it's just there's nothing there. I feel kind of bad to be honest. Um, it's confusing. It's, yeah, it's very confusing. Yeah, especially and this goes back to that whole stinking disconnecting this stuff that we've talked about many, many times in the show between seven and eight and not really having a cohesive end to end storyline that everybody was shooting for and, and all of that. But it feels like there's a character like Rose, you know, that was introduced in the last Jedi and we're led to believe that, you know, she's going to have a big future and she was a huge, you know, big star. And then of course with all the backlash that came from it, now we've seen hardly nothing from her in terms of the TV spots, it's really hard to paint a picture where there's going to be anything for her to do other than just be there 
um, side, standing on the sidelines. And, and that's unfortunate, I think. Um, well, I'm going to be optimistic then. So I think, okay. yeah, so what, I, what I'm hoping to see for Rose is that we do see her somewhat like Finn, right? If, if they've stepped into more of a leadership type of role, but again, they're still boots on the ground leadership for the most part. And they, and then she assumes some of that. And so we, we saw with the Dominic's character and some of that, like those are the ones that's where they take their direction from. That's where they get their inspiration and leadership from. And then she and Finn are taking it from Poe, right? So you get kind of the chain of command coming, you know, and going down the line like that. So I'm hoping that's where we see, you know, that she's got this leadership type of position. She's grown a lot in this last year. All of the, all of the things that we saw building in last Jedi and then some of the tones that they set for the character have been, you know, somewhat fulfilled, you know, before we get into this movie and we see her really comfortable and you have some notes in here about, you know, the necklace and does she get some, what's driving her? And maybe we get a bit more of, of that. I think we know the character well enough of what's important to her and where, where she stands on things, but is it really driving her to really, you know, be something bigger and to drive the behaviors across the entire resistance, or at least for maybe her part of it that she's responsible for. So I'm going to be cautiously optimistic that we at least see some of that, even though we haven't had a big feel for it in, in a lot of the promotional material. True. We've, we've got to also take into account that we've got a year that's passed since the last Jedi, right? So it, it may not be, I mean, we may just start the movie with her already in that position that you've talked about. And yeah, just I anticipate to, that'd be true. Uh, yeah, exactly. So we just have to assume that that's oh, okay. That, that already happened. And that was her character ve- development, even though we don't get it on screen. I think it would be cruel and unjust though, if they just, if they wrote her off and she died. Um, I don't think there's any chance of that, but yeah, yeah. to your point, that's what they did with Luke, right? Luke, right. you know, was basically just a, you know, hotshot pilot ish in a new hope. And all of a sudden we get to empire and he's a commander and well-respected and along those lines. And I, I think Rose will have that kind of same jump, but yeah, I don't think, I think there's 0% uh, or 0% chance that she dies. I don't think they could do that. I don't yeah, think they don't would, but I, I don't think they could from a fan perspective too, because it would just set the world on fire. Right. And I think rightfully yeah. so. In some regards. Yeah, no, it yeah. would. I mean, there would have to be some really good, compelling story arc in there for her character, right? It, yeah, it, and there's just not die. one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see one. I don't see a path that way, at least not from what we've seen so far or what they've tried to establish with. The, um, all right, the, so we're saying live on her. Okay, let's okay. get into Finn. Yeah. Uh, getting some expectations setting here from some of the interviews, right? That we're going to get a little backstory. Yes. How much do you think we'll actually get? I don't know that we're going to get a whole lot. I think we'll get enough that it will, and I'm going to, I'm not chickening out here. I just, I don't, I don't know where to go with it. I think we're getting, we'll get enough for him to continue his character development, whatever that means. Um, I won't say there's closure. Uh, but I think I still think that this, you know, Star Wars and, and especially the characters in this this trilogy, maybe more than some of the other ones, it, it seems to be the story of, again, it's not a matter of where you came from. It's a matter of where you're going. It's it's important to know. And I think that's why I think we're going to get some backstory on her or um, on him. I think we're going to get some backstory on Ray, even though, you know, we were told that there was nothing there from, you know, Kyle Ren, The Last Jedi. I just I just think that's kind of the message here that, yeah, it, I think it's, it's both, it's both sides. It does not matter where you came from. It matters where you're going, but sometimes it is kind of nice to know. And, and we, as fans want to know. And um, so I think we get some of that, but I just don't know that we're going to get a whole lot more beyond that because I mean, his life was, he was so young when he was taken by the first order that there really wasn't a whole lot there. And then once he got to the first order, I think that would be intriguing, but I think that gets messy. I don't think they have time to sit there and, and talk about, what life was like for Poe growing up as a young child under the command of the first order and working his way up through the ranks to finally getting into sanitation. I mean, it's just not a, a very compelling storyline there. Right. Right. So yeah, I don't think we're going to get more than that. I think we do find out from whoever his parents are. Maybe we find out who his family, I think it'd be cool if we under, if we find out his real name and he chooses to still be called Finn. Um, that would be kind of neat, but not necessary. Yeah, I think it's more about enriching the character for us, right? He's he's been a bit we we've had moments of growth and interest and things like that, but he still felt a little two-dimensional to me. 
since Force Awakens, we, we had, he felt like he was really central to Force Awakens. We were being taken on his journey, I think, as well as the others, where Poe felt maybe a little bit flat in Force Awakens. Finn was more dynamic, and then both of them fell a bit flat in Last Jedi. But the, I, I think we just want to see the character get more well-rounded, like just to learn a little bit more and pick up a bit of that story. And I'm, I'm with you. I don't think we need to see a lot to really feel like we get that, but I think we need to resume that growth of that character more so than what we saw in Last Jedi where he was still trying to run away. And then again, he, he did evolve a bit, but I think we want to see him have a little meteor part here, but also just bring his story a bit full circle for us and give us a better idea. Now, how they do that is really, I'm, I'm kind of perplexed how this even comes up or why it's, why it's uh, for lack of a better word, why it's important to the story rather than just for those reasons that we just talked about. But so I don't know, I don't know how that quite they're going to execute that or why it would come up unless it was just part of some random download into C3PO or something like that. But yeah, right. You know, but yeah, I mean, it's, but I hope we get something. I mean, just something to make, you know, for us to really feel like we, you know, we kind of care about him anymore. And I think the last Jedi, we did have one moment where we're like, holy crap, is he really going to sacrifice himself? Was, which would have been a really interesting moment that we do not get in Star Wars, but they didn't take it that far. Yeah. Not that I wanted what to see about him die. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I think he lives for sure. Um, yeah. Do we want to talk about shipping though with, with him? I, you know, I don't, this is the part of, this is the part I'm less interested in is, is who the characters all end up with. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't, I, I don't necessarily want a love triangle. I, I, I'll say that like, so the Rose, the Janas, the Rays and single red mingle. I don't know. They, I don't care about, you know, kind of his sleeping arrangements for the most part. <laughs> right. But I, I think at the end of the day, you want the characters to have meaningful relationships and him and Ray have a meaningful relationship. It seems like him and Rose do. So I'd hate to see some of those things just thrown away with the introduction of a new character without some extra meaning to that. And I don't even, I don't even see that in a romantic sense, but just some other connection that's important for us to have rather than just throwing another character with a love interest. That's a pretty shallow story. And I don't, I don't, I think that would be kind of a cheap move for these characters that really deserve more and deserve better. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I think on that point, like I, it would be, I don't really have a preference if he gets with, you know, Rose versus Ray versus Jana or whoever else, I, as long as it's driving the character storyline for him in some way and, and he's developing and there's a reason for it. That's, I could care less. It could be a dude. I don't even care. Just develop the character. Give me an interesting storyline there. If it's a dude, it better be Poe. Yeah, you can true. only be Poe if it's dude. So <laughs> that's how it's going to happen. Right. Um, okay. So we're saying he lives, um, right. right. I didn't hear you say that. Maybe I did. I think he lives, but what if, uh, what if Poe's no is, you know, seeing something happen to his buddy Finn, man, that would be, that'd be, rough. uh, I think it's, I think it'd be misdirection. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, I, I, that's, I think there's a very good, uh, there's a likelihood that that could be it. That could be who he's, you know, freaking out about. Um, but then he pops up, you know, 20 minutes later and somehow he escaped kind of thing. But I just can't see him dying. I mean, it, it wouldn't make sense at this point. And I, I do see him as, you know, again, the future of the resistance and rightfully so you got somebody who came over from the first order and you know, it's a good story to tell. So yeah, let him roll with it. So let's move on to Poe. Where do you think we're at with Poe as we get into this movie? Well, I mean, from where we were with the last Jedi, you know, Leia was kind of passing the torch to him. She was beating with the torch, but yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and so I, I was, I guess I was fully expecting to see him in that kind of a role. What I've seen from the TV spots and the trailers, I don't get the sense that he's in that role. I, he seems like he's still, and not to say he's, I mean, I wouldn't expect him to kind of be leading every, leading everything, especially with Leia still in command. Um, but I would have expected him to be more, you know, in the background, calling the shots, that sort of thing. But he seems to be right there, boots on the ground, you know, at the front lines. Still of the a lot soldier, of stuff. yeah. Yeah, still the soldier. I mean, he's still doning the uh, orange jumpsuit and popping into X-Wings. So, I don't know. I, I But, you know, like it, you've, just trying to interrupt, but like you've said before, what you've liked about the Anakin Skywalkers and the, even the Darth Vaders and even the Kylo Ren's, yeah, is yeah, that no. they're leading from the front, right? They're, they're in the right. mix with their people. and. I think resources are so scarce. That I don't think they can sacrifice anybody, especially when you have someone 
of the caliber of Poe, who is presumably the best pilot either in the galaxy or at least in the resistance. If we want to throw Ben slash Kylo in there, but at least in the resistance, he seems to be the best pilot. So for him to lead from the front, it's natural for him, right? We got that feeling from the last Jedi is that even with his leadership style, it's going to be, I'm in the mix. I can't, he can't be in the background. I think especially where he's at his uh, characters age wise, I don't think that makes much sense, but I, I think that's still where we're going to see him. And quite honestly, cinematically, that is a lot more interesting than being in the background. Yeah. No, you've, you've talked me into my own point. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah. And in terms of like him living, I think he has to live. I think he is, you know, if Leia's tagged him as being the future of the resistance and so be it. And um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of story left to be told with him, whether it's in books or TV format. I mean, you name it. He's already made. I mean, he's he's one of the few characters from the sequel trilogy that's already appeared in two other forms of media. We got him in comic books. We've had him in regular books and we've had him in resistance. Right. So right. he's just he's been everywhere. And uh, I, I can see that continuing that trend going, especially with if somebody like Oscar Isaac is willing to continue to reprise the role and he seems excited about doing it and loves it. And, you know, he is Poe Dameron just as much as probably Lando Calrissian is, you know, Billy D. Williams and vice versa. So, yeah, I can see him continuing on and still being a part of all the major storylines yet to come. Yeah. Give me some Black Squadron content, people. Yeah. <laughs> give me give me what I want. So do you think we'll get a scene? Do we get any scenes between? Do we get this? We've been talking about it for I don't know how many shows now and alluding to it. But do we get a Kylo versus Poe Dameron, you know, dogfight? Do we get a no. them teaming up together if there's a redemption arc in there? Nope. I think Nothing. there's, I think it's all limited to Ray. I think it, and I think that's important. I, I think that's, I think that's a good thing too, is that let's stress the connection and the relationship side of things between Ray and Kylo slash Ben and, and keep that focused, right? Let that, let those two be the counterpoints to each other rather than introducing a lot of other characters. Will they cross paths? Maybe, but any meaningful moment is really and all the, all the material we've seen, how I don't think we've seen Kylo in the mix with anybody except Ray from the Resistance, right. have we? Mm -hmm. And that seems realistic. If they're both on this converging journey, they're the two that should meet. We know that Ray's with the rest of her band a lot of times, but we're also starting to see promotional material now that she's isolated on her own and presumably in with, uh, with Kylo at times. But also, is it an adversarial or is it a you know partnership? But I think, yes, I think keep it all that way. I think Poe is outside of all of that for the most part. Yeah. Uh, Chewbacca, we've talked about already. Um, yeah. You know, do we, do we get a reunion between Lando and Chewbacca? Do you think they're going to dwell on that moment much at all? I, I hope we have a moment to acknowledge Han. We've talked a lot about that and, and including mm -hmm. and, and Leia as well, right? Yeah. So I hope we get something. I don't, we don't need much. I don't think we're going to get much, but something quick, something you know, just gives us that moment. So yeah, well, I think we'll get something like that. And what about the relationship between him and the Porg? Oh, I boy. said, Peter, Peter, the Porg, is he on his shoulder or is he, because I mean, it just seems like they've, they're going to set this up and, and that would be fine with me if there was just, you know, little bits, gag bits like we had in the last Jedi with him and the, you know, constantly fighting with the Porg and all that. I think that's fine. I would, my kids love that stuff. So he should have been in the new returning characters. Albert, if you were that important, if it was that important to talk about Porgs, <laughs> Peter the Porg, are the Porgs going to be there? Does yeah. he have a family now? Is he a family <laughs> man? Do all the family members survive? What's yeah. his, what's his story arc look or her, whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't. Do you think, are, are we going to see a Porg in this damn movie? <laughs> yes, we're going to see one. Okay. I think that's a given. All right. Yeah, that's probably true. Darn but, it, um, darn it, JJ. <laughs> It'd be cruel if he ate it, if Chewbacca ate it. No, uh, I think he's over that. He's past that. He's past that. Porgs are friends, not food. Wow. Chewbacca's an interesting character. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah. Nice. Um, it, Chewbacca's an interesting character because he, I, I don't know. It's, it's a character that um, I could see them killing him off. I hate to say that. I could too, but he's so lovable. How can you do that to Chewie? Well, ask uh, R.A. Salvatore, because I think he's in the, or who was it that wrote uh, Vector Prime? Uh, I think that's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. But no, I, I think he lives. 
Yeah, I'm going to go with lives. And I think, again, to go back to what I said earlier, I think he's going to, I think he goes on and lives with, with Lando and they go on more adventures together somewhere down the road. But beyond that, I don't know. This character is very interesting. There's, we've seen in the uh, teaser trailer pictures, stills, uh, his bandoliers and his bowcaster are laying there in that white room that Kylo Ren's in. And so, I think at one point we were talking on this show, speculating that maybe he gets captured. And um, so if if that happens, if that happens, I actually am kind of interested to see him reunited, if you will, with Kylo Ren and how Kylo Ren treats him uh, as a prisoner, whether there's any kind of level of respect or is he, you know, treat him with, or doesn't treat him with any respect whatsoever. Um and the reason I say that is because I think it would be intriguing to see him be one way in front of the First Order troops. And then once you've got him in a cell, he's going to ask him questions and everything. He takes the cuffs off or I don't know. He probably wouldn't take the cuffs off because I think Chewie would probably kill him. But maybe there's a level of respect there because it's just that whole relationship is very interesting to me. That relationship between Kylo Ren as a baby, as a boy and uh, Chewbacca. And he had a name for him. No, that was Wando. He called him Wando as a <laughs> kid. But anyways, um, I think that's but an yeah, interesting I mean, that's, idea, though. I, uh, that's the part of his, yeah. it's a part of his past, you know, and he's, maybe Kylo saw him as like the family dog, right? Um, well, but I think but what's Kylo, that going to be like? Yeah, with Kylo, he's already got to be changing back into Ben if, if that's going to work. Because, yeah. I mean, hell, he stabbed Han and Chewie shot him. So <laughs> there's some, there's some irreparable damage to this relationship, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I mean, some of it is you, you have to have, Kylo has to be changing and evolving into something else for that to play out in, in some way similar to what you've described, because I, I didn't thought about that. I think that would be interesting if we got to see that, that there was some moment where you see a break mm -hmm. you know, or the, the cracks start to widen a bit, maybe for Ben to show, you know, to, for Ben to resurface out of the, you know, the cocoon of Kylo Ren. Gosh, we're going to get philosophical here, but you know, something like that, I think, would be interesting to see if, of just one of those moments and then maybe, you know, shut it down because, you know, we can't we can't have these moments go too far. Right. 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 All right. So, um, Chewy, don't die on me, Chewy. Don't die, Chewy. All right. Let's get into the heavy hitters. We'll start with Luke. Luke Skywalker. First off, is he back? Yes. And how much do you think we're going to get him? I have in here as. As Ben Kenobi in Return of the Jedi, meaning I think he's going to be in the movie. I don't think we're going to see him much at all. I, yeah, probably tend to agree with that. We're going to have some mentorship moments, I think. We, we yeah. talked a little bit about this uh, in the last show. That so, feels weird to write and to say. How so? But that's where we are. We, I just mean like it's, I don't know, it's Luke Skywalker. It was the same way yeah. when The Force Awakens came out, right? Um he wasn't in it, but all of the last 30 seconds of the movie. And for some, that wasn't enough. And then obviously with The Last Jedi, he was in it, but, you know, not the way a lot of people expected or wanted. And so that left him, left a lot of people high and dry. And I just don't think at this point that he's going to have a really serviceable kind of role. I think he's there to part words of wisdom and chime in here and there when he can. But I would like to see a moment from Return of the Jedi a similar moment that we had in Return of the Jedi where Luke is going to about to run off and, you know, Kenobi sits him down on, on the log and starts talking about, Hey, you know, this is your sister. And I'm not saying that particular thing, but maybe there's a something there where he talks about his, her parents, right? The parallels between him finally disclosing some, some, you know, personal information to rage and much like Kenobi did to him with his uh, sister. Um, and then obviously with his father and, but uh, that think, would be kind of a cool parallel. Yeah. And, with with Skywalker as well, I'd like to hear something similar, uh, a quote about, you know, if you're going to go fight the Emperor, I can't go with you kind of thing. You're, you're going to have to go do that right. on your own. Again, paralleling what happened in um, you know, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, I think you're right. It's having a candid conversation where you are more peers than mentor mentee, right? And you, you can have the honest conversation and you can have you know, this is the reality of the situation. And like you said, you know, these are the, if you're, if this is the path you choose or this is the path you, you likely need to go, 
here's what you can expect. And here, here are the limitations. Here are the things you need to consider. Here are the things that can save your life, right? Like Yoda did as well. So I think those are the, I, I agree with you. I would like to see that type of conversation between Luke and Ray. And again, that's not a huge scene. It was only a few minutes, I think in Jedi. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and again, do we, you know, is there some, I think we, we keep holding out hope that there's some epic moment that, that Luke can still help with. Right. I mean, we, we, we keep revisiting the idea of the whole chosen one thing. Well, I know we're going to talk about it here in a minute, but you know, how, do these things resurface? Do they have a way of pulling it all together? And, you know, Luke is such a important character to a lot of us uh, for the last 40 plus years that we still hold out hope that there's some, there's some moment that's really going to make us re, you know, reignite our love or maybe validate our continued love for Luke Skywalker where he's at in his, you know, quote unquote life right now. So maybe that's where, maybe that's where I'll land is, is more, is there something that's going to help us revalidate our love for Luke Skywalker? And I'm hoping so. I'm hoping we do get something that, that feels really special. Yeah. I think it would, uh, yeah, I don't know. That one's tough because we, I think we had that moment in the last Jedi, whether you liked it or not. I think that's what they were going for is this is the final call for this heroic person that, you know, was legendary at that point. And he went out with a bang. Um, and I think that was, I think that's just it. I think from this point on, it's really about Ray. And I don't know that we are, we're going to get him doing a whole lot uh, specifically or uniquely to, to help Ray or to kind of kill evil or Palpatine or anything else. I, I really think it's just going to be auxiliary advice, mentorship, and that might be it. So, yeah, I mean, in the, the little monologue that we got in the very first trailer, I mean, definitely supports your perspective on that one of, you know, it's all you now. This is your fight. Mm-hmm. We're out. Yeah. Peace. Right. Yeah. A thousand generations live in, you now. Yep. So um, sorry, kid, you're on your own. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what all about, right. uh, yeah, Leia, right. Yeah. So, and we've not spoken much about the CGI aspects of all this and how they're going to work into it. Although, it, yeah, I think we did touch on it. A little bit. Episode. A little bit. Um, is I don't I don't think she's going to be in the movie much at all. Uh, I'll stick with what I think I said last time. There's only so much footage they can throw in there, and that they've could have they could have possibly recorded and are able to use. Even if it's two or three minutes, five minutes, it's still a pretty good amount of time, right? All things considered, in a two and a half hour movie and how much screen time everybody has, um, I think we're going to get a lot of footage from her that's you know, stand-ins and back shots where you're not really you can't really tell it's her. Um, I've already seen some some video out there of the footage, the raw footage that they have recorded from The Force Awakens that they repurposed for The Rise of Skywalker, and it's amazing what they've done. I mean, they just changed everything. It's just her head, essentially, that they've kept the same. Uh, but the outfit's different. The background's now different. She's you know using the same... It looks like she's uh, voicing the same words of dialogue. So it sounds like they've been figured out a way to to use repurpose the actual dialogue itself. So we're not going to get like CG lips or anything like that. So it's just amazing what they've done with her. But I think the, the big question for me is at the end of this movie, does she live? Does she die? And how would you, and just even beyond that, like what kind of, um, what kind of exit do you want from her? Man, or from her character. That's so tough considering like I have no, they can't have any kind of ending already pre-done for this character. Right. So that's really tough to, to do that. Uh, but real quick, JJ has always been saying that they've captured the performance of Carrie Fisher and that she's in the movie. So I think when you hear some of the things that Albert's talking about of they've replaced, you know, maybe just the head is the same. Some of these things sound very weird to hear and say out loud, <laughs> but I mean, but you get her, you get the point, right? Of you, you can't, in order to make this fit in the movie, you have to do something but we want to capture the the essence of the character. We want to capture the performance of the actor so that it's still a genuine performance and, and a genuine part of the movie, right? And I'm hoping that we're pretty forgiving with some of that, especially if it looks, you know, a little strange or something looks a little out of place here and there, you know, but anyway, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Man, but hey, what kind of ending? I don't know. I mean, it, if they're gonna, I've always, well, I've been on record as saying, I hope that she lives on in some way. And it doesn't, they're not giving us any clues as to what happens because 
JJ talks out of both that, both sides of his mouth on this one that mm-hmm. it, it doesn't uh, it's not befitting of her character to let her die off screen, but letting her live on kind of doesn't feel right either. So, okay, well, which one is it, buddy? You got, you yeah. got to, you got to sit somewhere, right? Unless you just drop the character, which doesn't seem likely to happen. So I think, unfortunately, I think she dies, becomes one with the force, whatever you want to call it. And I think it's one of these things of, do you have a Luke Skywalker type of moment for Leia from Last Jedi for Leia in, in, in kind of that effect where she's somehow gets involved or does some sort of inspirational moment or, or something like that to help the characters either, uh, either with Ray or maybe even with Ben. Right. And then to see something where she can make a, a true impact on the story, but you know, how does she die? I don't know. I hope it's not of a broken heart. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I just uh, slipped that in there. That was terrible. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, no, you're not right. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? I didn't see it coming. No. So what about um, you? How does how would you want I, an ending befitting of this character? Yeah, I don't want to answer that question. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's hard. So, it's really hard. Yeah, you're right. It's very difficult. Um yeah, just trying to wrap your head around how they would even do that. And you know, does she go out uh, you know unceremoniously in some way? And that seems doesn't feel I, right. Yeah. It doesn't feel right. So here's. Hmm. So in the trailer, in one of the trailers, there is a moment in there where you see Ray and you hear a voice saying the force will be with you always. Right. So if, if they, if they do, if she does die off and they don't show it and it's just implied, maybe that's post screaming. I don't know. I just, that came to me right now. Maybe that's maybe, maybe you're post screaming. No, or whatever. Maybe that would that's be very fitting. Yeah, that would be very fitting. Right. So, so she goes out that way and they don't show it. Okay. If they do that, but then, yeah, to your point, she comes back as a force ghost or what we saw in that trailer is, is, you know, really what's about to happen or transpire and that she's still there. Then I think that's okay. I think that's fitting. We don't need to, we know that she has, is, you know, transcended and she's living on and she's with her brother and her dad and whatever else and force heaven that that seems fine to me i don't i mean that's and that's all i would expect and they could they wouldn't have to worry about you know i don't i just don't think she's gonna live uh, let me get back to the, the original question i don't think she's gonna live it's how they do it um and how they how she does go out and ultimately how she still is able to contribute to ray's journey or the defeat of palpatine or whatever the the evil is here in, in this movie. I think that's really the the picture, or I guess what we're going for. Yeah. Saving her son. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh uh, yeah. Don't even start it. I mean, that's, I think I said that from uh, even back when we were talking about the last Jedi and, and whether or not Ben Solo could be redeemed. And I think I always said, if there was anyone, his soft spot was always with his mom. Right. And I speak from my own personal experience, uh, both in my life and my son's life is that's just a very special relationship that exists between a mother and a son. And I always felt like if there was any uh, path to redemption, it was through Leia in some way. I'm starting to feel like it's more towards Ray that that his path to redemption is through Ray because the because just her unbiting like compassion for anyone and everyone, Um, and and her ability to just to always see the good in people. But uh, nonetheless, I think I I think all of this really contributes to a redemption arc for him. It's not just Leia. It's not just Ray. It's, um, you know, it's the chewy moment. If we, if we get that, I think it's just a culmination of a lot of different things that finally push him over the edge, uh, back into the light in some way. So, but anyways, going back to Leia. Yeah. I think that's a, a perfect way for her to go. And at this point, I, I, you know, I don't really have a whole lot of specifics in terms of what I'd like to see her do just cause I know the situation that's gotta be really difficult and trying to keep that character going. I, it's just better that they end it at this point, but that's just me. Yep. Sad, but true. Sad, but true. Um, all right. Finally, as far as the characters goes, we're going to end with Ray. Uh, and I got something just selfishly here. I've always wanted to see Ray fly an X wing. We had it in the, um, the art of, I think it was the last Jedi or was it the force awakens? No, force it was awakens. The, yeah. Force awakens. There was some art in there where she was flying around in an X-Wing with her lightsaber sticking out and she was scraping the underbellies of Star Destroyers and taking them down that way. And that seems really far-fetched. But nonetheless, I've, you know, she had that helmet on in uh, The Force Awakens and, you know, I was, it'd be cool to see her not put necessarily that helmet on, 
but just see her put a helmet on and see that same look again all over again and and you know be that a foreshadowing moment that we had in the force awakens that that was something to come but uh I don't know. From what I've seen so far, I don't know that we're going to get the opportunity to see her fly next week. She's got to get around somehow, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, she's getting <laughs> towed around by the by the uh, Millennium Falcon. Either she's piloting it or... Oh, that's true. Yeah. She's someone's taking her around in it. It'd be um, cool, but yeah. I'm sorry, Albert. I'm going to go with 0% chance. Yep. Thanks, dude. Um, You're welcome. All right. So more, more meatier than the question of her parents and her lineage. Yeah. It, it was a thing in The Force Awakens kind of wasn't a thing, kind of was not a thing in The Last Jedi, and now it seems like it could possibly be a thing again. Seems so. Daisy yeah. Ridley's interviews seem to, well, they're not even suggesting. She's saying, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, going to no. get the, you're going to get the answers, but she's framing that up in a way of that it, kind of to our point that it, it doesn't matter anymore. She's picked her family, and that's the way that she views, um, I think all the characters really in the sequel trilogy is that they've all, picked who their families are regardless of where they come from and to your point right is more about where you're going and, and the relationships you're forming as a result of uh, of all of your experiences and i think uh yeah so will it minimize the importance of the parents i think it's going to we're gonna we'll learn about it but then we will probably dwell on it a little bit and then be ready to move on that's that's yeah. what i'm hoping right let's answer the question but then let's let's go ahead and move on right right it, we don't need it yeah we don't need to dwell on it it's just, well, hold on. I'll save that thought when we talk about her, her lineage and her, who her family is, I guess, going forward. It's just so poignant um, that how little we care about that today versus what we did, you know, after Force Awakens and even yeah. leading up to Last Jedi. We just don't, we, we're just, we kind of don't care anymore. At least yep. some of us. Yeah, I mean, it's it's part of, uh, you know, growing. <laughs> we, we had a, we had a, you got to go through the, the phases of a loss, right? Uh, of a death and at some point you just get to acceptance and you're ready to just move on. It's not important anymore. It was, and it, you know, there's a part of you that's, it still is, but does it really play a big part in the role of all this going forward? Realistically, realistically, nah, not really. Yeah. It doesn't change who she is or what she's doing. Right. No, it shouldn't. And if it, it, if it does, not. then there's, and if, if there is something that's really monumental, then okay. Then you have a decision point possibly, you know, of something kind of like Luke did, right. Luke had a choice to make. So is is Ray going to have some choice based on this knowledge that she acquires? I don't know. Maybe. Um, new lightsaber. Uh, we've speculated about this forever, uh, but do you think we're going to see any chance we'll see her with a new lightsaber? Yeah, I'm kind of. You talk about characters like the Falcon, the Luke's lightsaber, Anakin's lightsaber, kind of has a you know similar place in our hearts and mindset, right? And mm. I like the idea that she's repaired it because that's very much her, right? The, the scavenger, the, the junkyard and making do with the parts you have in order to make something work. But I like the idea of at some point in this movie or she, or that we get something that she has crafted herself, but where does it fit in the story? I don't know. Um, you know, it's more of, we know that she's got Luke's. There's a question about whether or not Leia had a lightsaber. So I could see where she would just acquire again, but is that an acquisition or is that her actually doing something to, you know, create something of her own rather than continuing with the, the hand-me-downs or the, the re rebuilding of, of things that have been given to her. And I would love to see her construct something new, but I just don't know where that would fit in the story. So I'm going to go with no to a Ray constructed lightsaber, but possibly inheriting another lightsaber if the Leia thing is, you know, if Leia has a lightsaber for some reason. Hmm. Yeah. I, um, I would like to see her with a new lightsaber that she's constructed. I don't think we get the moment of her constructing it by any means. We won't see that. Um, but yeah, I would like to see her with a new one of some sort at some point. And that stays consistent with what I've always said. I think I've gone so far as to say that I want to see it integrated with her staff and that she's got some kind of like double bladed pole arm, you know, blades coming out both ends. Maybe one's a different color, that sort of thing. I, that seems a little far fetched. Maybe it swings open and it's red. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, okay. Well. That's not happening. Um, but, but yeah, I would <laughs> like to see a new lightsaber from her. In what I'm envisioning, envisioning is probably way too much for what they're going to do on screen. So I think they're going to keep it simple. But right, I guess we'll see. Um, the, the whole, whole building, building of a lightsaber is a really monumental task. So I don't yeah. know that we'll see that on screen, unfortunately. All right. 
The um, I have Raylo and the Redemption, and we've kind of touched on this already. And and where, where I was going is what I mentioned earlier, where I think Ben's path, if if he does go down the Redemption arc, you know, had you asked me about this in the Force Awakens, I would have said Mom. If you asked me about this at midway through the Last Jedi, I'd say Mom. But there is a turning point there when we had like the hand sex scene. And then obviously at the very end when I think he was very sincere when he was talking to her about wanting to, although well, the relationship I think is, is very sincere. I think from Kylo Ren's perspective, I think there's, he is one way with her and, and a, an entirely different way with everybody else in the entire galaxy. And so maybe with the exception of his mother. Um, but I think if there's a path through redemption, I think it is either through his mom, it's through Ray, it's most likely through Ray. And so I think we're, I think we're going to be set up with a story that's going to have, uh, Ray playing an integral part in, again, just her unbiting compassion. And again, the ability to just see the good in anyone and everyone and trust in them. And I think that's something that Kylo Ren or Ben Solo has really never had and hasn't had it in a very long time that somebody believed in the good in him. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's, I think we're going to see that relationship there. Now, whether or not they get together and there's more than just plutonic versus romantic, you know, not to hit, touch on what we touched on in, in 304 and probably 303, but um, I don't even really care at this point. I think there's a relationship there. I think you have to acknowledge that. And however that turns out, I don't really have a diff- uh, preference one way or the other, so long as it drives the redemption arc, because I am kind of in favor of seeing that at some point. Right. I, I'm with you on the, the, the Raylo aspect of it. If I, I'm kind of in the camp lately, last week or two, I've been thinking about this of do they just leave the romantic relationship of it an open-ended question and just don't even address it mm-hmm. <laughs> in some way, or they, they, they still flirt with it a little bit, but they don't really give you an idea right, hint if, at it, that if there happening. ever was something more. Right. Yeah. And we just, they rely more on the, no, it was a really, intimate relationship on some level, but we don't know if it was ever anything else. I think that would be an interesting way of not satisfying any of the crowd. <laughs> oh, exactly. It would just yeah. fury. Yeah. It would fuel the fire for both sides. Right. <laughs> Maybe so. And I mean, that's a little sadistic. I don't know, but yeah, I'm with you though. It, uh, Ben's redemption is going to come through Ray. I think it's the only, it seems to be the natural point. Cause I'm with you at one point. It seemed like Leia, even through part of the last Jedi, but all of a sudden we started to have this connection and we we've seen this with, when you, when you have a, a strong relationship or you have a spouse or something like that, all of a sudden the, the relationships in your life all change in one way or another. And the one that you rely on is that, is that person that you're with day in and day out or that you want to be with day in and day out. So I think that's, um, that's where we're at with these two, whether or not it's romantic or not, kind of doesn't matter. There is something special about the relationship. And like we said last week with Kylo and Ben, we really want to understand better what that is. We want to see why that's important and how it's important and, and how some of these things are possible that they're achieving with the the force Skype and, and things like that. Of It seems to be more than what Snoke was doing because it continued to happen after his death. So what does that mean? And, and how does that, how is any of that even possible? Those are the aspects of that story I would like to see. And again, where is what's Ray's future really look like? And, and answering a few of these questions along the way. What about the, um, so assuming, well, let me, does she live or does she die? Oh, 100% live. Okay. And I'm with you 100% there. I just thought I'd ask. But, okay, so she lives. What is the future of the character of Ray? Do you think we see... I forget. I think it was Kathleen Kennedy this week, as a matter of fact, or just late last week, who said that some of the characters that we are going to see in The Rise of Skywalker will be seen again in other movie media forms, et cetera, blah, 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 right? Right. Um, do you think this is one of the characters or do you think Daisy Ridley is is done with the character and, you know, we'll, we'll get her in books and comics, but in terms of like live action, we won't see anything, I guess, or... And then I guess, so that's part, that's part of the question that goes hand in hand with what's the future of, of Ray as a character herself. Is she, does she start a Jedi temple or again, does she start the new Jedi order? Um, or is she just go on about her way or is she just a peacekeeper? What do you think? So I think in the context of this movie, I don't think we're going to get those types of answers. We didn't get with the return of the Jedi either with Luke. We didn't know what Luke was going to do next. And I don't know that it's important for us to have any kind of 
I don't know, epilogue after the fact of saying, you know, this is what, this is what everybody's up to. Kind of like we had at the end of Rebels, right? I don't expect that kind of thing in this movie of saying, you know, here's where everyone was at in 10 years, or even like Harry Potter, right? Where yeah. they had to go and revisit the characters after some time to show you the resolution of the relationships and things like that. And yeah. I don't, yeah. So from that, from this movie's perspective, I don't, my expectations are like 5% that we will get any idea of what her next steps were. Now to Kathleen Kennedy's comment, I think it's important to put that into some sort of context. It doesn't always mean the future of the character. Sometimes it's all of the filler in between material. And I'm with you. Well, you didn't really say this, but I, I have a feeling you're probably in the same boat of, I would be a bit surprised to see Daisy Ridley live action Ray anytime really soon. Mm -hmm. I would expect to see the character come up in uh, comics. I would expect it to come up animated too. And Daisy Ridley might be reprising the role for the voice. And I, that would not surprise me to see her in some of whatever other material they have, whether it's resistance cartoon, or if it's something else where the, the character surfaces or does something, I know resistance is probably less likely at this point, but you know, something like that where the, cause she's right. I mean, some of these characters really resonate with younger audiences. I mean, with your daughters in particular, right? Some of these characters really are, super important to them, even them and sons too, not just the daughters, but, you know, characters they look up to and characters that they've enjoyed for the last several years. And those characters have to live on somehow. And I think animated is a fantastic way of doing it. We're seeing some interesting things with the galaxies of adventure. This is something I always thought was really, really cool how they've done those. And can you do more with some of that and, you know, forces of destiny and some of those other ideas as well. But now if I'm to speculate, <laughs> what is she going to do? Yeah. Jedi temple, Jedi order, something along those lines or whatever, wherever the character ends up, you know, this whole Jedi Sith thing, if that continues, then yeah, you have some more, some sort of a uh, order or something like that, that she's going to rekindle because that's what Jedi do. They kind of rebuild much like the Sith do in their own way. Yeah. I, um, I don't, I don't think we see uh, an epilogue per se. That's, you know, fast forward like five, 10 years. I don't think we get anything like that. If we get anything, it'll be shortly after the uh, the events of the Rise of Skywalker. But I think she's destined to start the Jedi Order up again. And I think, honestly, from a franchise perspective, I think that's where they need to go. They haven't had... It's been a while since we've had Jedi running around, right? At least in the in the relative timeline of, of Star Wars. So I think it's time again. And with it, I think there's a whole lot of opportunity to kind of you know, uh, borrow from many of the stories that we got from the Clone Wars series and some of the stuff that we got from Rebels. That would be cool to see that again. Uh, but then I think there's new stuff there, the introduction of new force powers and, you know, all the work that Luke did to kind of go out and do uh, uncover a lot of the secrets of both the Jedi and the Sith and seeing her leverage that or seeing just new aspects of the force that we had never seen. And, you know, they can, I'm not saying they're going to retcon it, but you know, he was out there doing archaeology stuff and, and digging into the past and going way back when. And um, there's probably stuff on there that we've not seen, at least in, in canon, that we may have seen in Legends and like, you know, the Old Republic and all that. So, so yeah, I think it's a, I think we're we're getting set up here for a new order, uh, no pun intended there, or just a, a new, you know, a new story, new storylines of, of, of Jedi and lightsabers and the Force and and all that. And I think that'd be cool. And I think she's obviously the right person that would kind of lead all that. So, um, all right, let's move on. Cause we're getting really, uh, short on time and I've got, we can maybe go, we can do a quick fire round on this. Although some of these are, <laughs> some of these are whole conversations, if not shows in of themselves. But, uh, I guess overall, is there anything that we have not talked about that, um, you're looking forward to seeing, or you want to see coming out of, uh, the, the rise of Skywalker? I mean, we want to see how Palpatine, comes into this, right? I mean, yeah. I think that's the one big question we've got. Aside from that, it's the, how do they tie the whole saga together? Are they yeah. really going to accomplish that, right? And, and how are they going to do that? Including, and you've got this a little bit later on, but how do you work in, or do you work in the whole chosen one aspect of this as well? And make that and embrace that and somehow answer some of those questions, <clears throat> some of those questions as well. Yeah, and I think those are the, the major points that we need to, those are the major things that we need to see resolved you know, besides Ray and, and Kylo, of course. But I, when I kind of boil it down to just a few things, I mean, th those are really broad. I get that. But those are the things we need resolved. We need our, we need the answers. We need to have a satisfying conclusion 
to where we're at in the, if this is really the end of the saga. Is it, do you think it's more important for you to, for them to wrap up the trilogy as it is the saga or does it have to be both? I think it has to be both on some level. I think the trilogy comes first and the saga comes after that. But the way that mm. they, but the way that they're marketing this, I think you, you've got to somehow tie those elements in and acknowledge the past. Again, we, we keep, we keep bringing this, we brought this up over the last several years of you have to continue to honor the past. You have to keep bringing some of those elements in and not discount them and not uh, retcon them in certain ways, you know, all of those types of deals, but you have to acknowledge the past and you have to embrace it. And you have to, again, if you're going to tout this as a saga and the end of it, then I think, yeah, you are forced to have to address and include those into your story in some, in some way. I think, I, I think you just can't get around that without it feeling like you really, you stop short of, of meeting that really the, the, the requirement you set forth yourself as from JJ Abrams perspective of what they were looking to do and what they've touted the whole time. The, uh, and, and that was my answer too, honestly. So I'm, well, I'm not going to regurgitate what you said, but I, I do want to see them pull it all together. If not, then yeah, first priority is wrap up the trilogy. Um, do we, do you think we're going to see, and this is a wild card here, but do you think we're going to see anybody from the clone wars, rebels, resistance, or the Mandalorian, uh, in live action format here? Uh, Mandalorian is a hard no. I don't think we're seeing anybody. Clone Wars would be really shocking because that was so far in the past that that would be difficult. Now, Rebels is interesting because we have Lando and he was in Rebels. Uh, mm -hmm. But who else would you see? I, I think Hera and Chopper are about the only two that are probably recognizable to a lot of people and interesting to see. And Resistance, I think Kaz is a pretty... I think that's actually something that you could really look into and it wouldn't be difficult to do because yeah. they, the character looks like the, you know, the actor, the actor looks like the character. So it's right. pretty, you know, it, it'd be pretty obvious, but I, I think, you know, beyond that, I'm going to limit it really to that and not, uh, and not look any further than that. I think those are about the only cameos that we would really, we really see. We were, um, we were driving home yesterday and, um, my son asked if he's like, dad, do you think we're going to see anybody from the Mandalorian? in uh the rise of skywalker and i thought you yeah, know that's a really good question i don't think we will and then he and i just started talking about possibilities because he does like to speculate and, and theorize um and what we had agreed upon was if they did that would be kind of neat if they just said and this is really fanboyish so bear with me here um it would be one of these scenes where they're like okay who can we get help with to fight off all of these imperial um star destroyers and they're coming what do we need to do and so they start going through the list of people or factions that are available and they make some weird reference or some slight reference of, well, we could ask the Mandalorians, but no, you know, then they allude to the fact that now the Mandalorian, as we know him in the TV show, has now pulled all of them together. And Mandalore is now once again strong and united and all of that, but they are still very much isolationist and they don't really kind of like to meddle in, in the affairs of, you know, the, the, the whole galac galaxy kind of thing. It would be neat to see something like that, but I, again, I'm with you. At the end of the day, I don't think there's, I don't think they're going to do. It. I think it'd be a great tie-in. We've yeah. got an episode coming up um, Wednesday night. They are removed. They moved the episode seven of the Mandalorian to Wednesday night to premiere prior to obviously the release of the Rise of Skywalker. And there's been some speculation as to whether or not that was done because of they're just trying to ride the wave of anticipation and and knowing that people are probably not going to be as interested on Friday night to watch that show because they're going to be out watching the rise of Skywalker, or is it because there is some tie in that there's going to be a character or some storyline or some reference, even maybe an Easter egg that we see in the Mandalorian that we will uh, revisit in some way or form in the rise of Skywalker. Do you buy into any of that? Nope. <laughs> All right. I think it's purely from a, no one will be there to watch it on Friday. So <laughs> let's release it on Wednesday and incur and again, get people thinking about star Wars, get people energized for star Wars. I, I view it more like that. I, it's it's difficult to see how that show would tie in. I'm with you. I, I like what you and your son were talking about is do they make a passing comment or something that ties back to that in, in a very loose way? I, I kind of like that idea the more I think about it now, but you, you just can't bring them too far along that sure. because it starts yeah. to discount what you're able to do in the show and mm -hmm. you start to look, you start to read a bit too much. In. So you have to keep it somewhat nebulous, right? Yeah, and I think. From that perspective, I think that makes more sense. But it's an interesting concept, though, of, you know, that the Mandalorians are in a different place and it piques your interest a bit more for your other content that's 
now tangentially connected. I, yeah. I think that's a pretty neat idea. I like that. What about uh, Force Ghosts? Uh, do we see any of them in, in this movie? And if so, who, who do you think do we see? Uh, yeah, I think we have to see Luke, right? I, right. I, I think I we'll get more him. than a voice. I think we'll actually see him on screen. Yes, I do too. Yeah, that's about the only one I'm going to go out and like actually say. Because so no Yoda, no Anakin, Leia, yeah. Obi Wan. That's tough. I mean, if so, if Leia gone. dies, then yeah, her like what I would expect. I would expect her to be on screen as a Force ghost as well. Now, would I like to see Yoda again? Yes. Would I like to see Anakin? Yeah, I think so. I think if especially if you start tying in with the Chosen One thing, I think that's important in some regard especially if you want to stress the Skywalker lineage and the Skywalker family as a whole, I think it's important to see them all in one place. And I think that would be pretty interesting. What would be more interesting about that is that Anakin would be look younger than Luke or Leia. <laughs> so, but Hey, first time they've all been in the same room together. Congratulations. <laughs> right, true. right. So it's a, well, I guess at least on screen, I'm trying to think now well, anyway. In the old uh, EU, you had some different different times. But anyway, yeah, so I think that would be, uh, those are the ones I would, I'd like to see some of the other characters, but I'm not expecting that. Either. Like Obi-Wan Kenobi, it'd be great to see you and show show up. But uh, again, that's a lot of Force ghosts, a lot of Force spirits, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, if they did show up that way, it'd have to be like some scene where they all came together and took down Palpatine as a collective whole, which just would, it seems too cartoonish. It seems very anime-ish for it to happen, but it does. And um, does it, and does it take away from your, from your primary characters? That yeah, are no, yeah, alive? absolutely. Yeah. Good point. It does. I think it, it completely robs Ray and Ben, I guess if, if there's a redemption arc there from, from what they've gone through. Right. Because they, they can't just be there for moral support. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. We expect too much now because Yoda has shown us that there's a bridge between the, you know, the physical and the ethereal type of worlds. Um, there are, are critics uh, that say that if Ben does go down a redemption arc, that somehow this pulls from the Chosen One prophecy or flies in the face of all of that Anakin sacrificed and, and died for. Um, do you buy into that? And do you think they're going to even touch on the Chosen One prophecy? I don't see how you avoid somehow connecting to the Chosen One prophecy. I, I really don't know how, you, I mean, I, I could see them completely ignore it, right? But I think if you were really to tell a complete, if you were to look at this from a saga perspective, it's really difficult to see how you avoid this because you, you almost have to address it. Mm -hmm. And I think some of it though now comes to Ray. And I, you've brought this up a few times. Are we misreading the prophecy altogether? Has it been told to us through a certain lens that we, we still don't understand this as well as we, as we would like to think we do. And, of course, we've got George Lucas's perspective on it too, which is a, a huge pull on us. But, you know, again, prophecies are not necessarily to be taken literally. And even after monumental study, even in hindsight, you can still be proven wrong about what it actually meant. Because again, we're always looking for the answer. Yeah. So do we get another variation of the answer, another interpre interpretation of the answer, I think would be an interesting perspective or an interesting dynamic to really... Um, uh, for them to decide to explore. But yeah, it's, hmm. I understand yeah, no. the concern though. I really do understand the concern. No, and I do under, I, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to undermine the concern because I think it's legit. Um, but that said, I, and for anybody that's new to the show listening, and we picked up a lot of new listeners, especially with the, the Rise of Skywalker about to come out. But, um, you know, my theory is that well, let me, I, I do believe that Anakin fulfilled the prophecy and it's over. Is that the only chosen one prophecy that's ever existed? No, I just don't believe that. I feel like this is cyclical and that this prophecy comes and goes and that there are other chosen ones that have yet to come and they probably will never happen in my own personal lifetime. Maybe there's another one that they touch on later down the road. But um, if that's the case, maybe maybe Ray is a, is another version of the chosen one. And this is just another part of it. So if in that regard, I don't think it takes away from anything that Anakin did. I mean, he ended the, uh, he brought balance to the force, at least from, from that perspective by uh, destroying Palpatine. And you could argue that Palpatine's back. Yeah, sure. He's back, but now we're in a different era and now it's time for someone else to take them out. And they don't necessarily have to be the chosen one. 
It could be a totally different prophecy that's written somewhere that we've never heard before that talks about Ray and, uh, I don't know, going through and, and, and taking out the evil or whatever, whatever the case is. Um, I, I just think that's, that's a, a very viable possibility. So I don't think it robs it of it, but I can see where the concern comes from. So, no, and you're absolutely right. Life went on, life continued on, and we were going to get conflict at some point. Right. We knew that the scales would tip one way or another at some point because. And we'll continue. It's an ebb and flow. It's gonna Yeah, happen. exactly. That's I mean, Star Wars. The, yeah, well, it's life. I mean, we, we have sure. rise and fall of empires, right? And they take very long times. And I'm using empire very lightly. I'm actually thinking more in the historical sense for <laughs> yeah, us. our own personal history. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we, we see this throughout history all the time. So it's never, it's never resolved. It's just temporarily satiated almost. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. All right. Well, I, think we're we're probably out of time um uh, let's just end it as do you have anything else any hot takes any tinfoil hat predictions stuff that you uh we've not talked about discussed yet no not really i think we've we're at the point now we need to see this thing we need to we need to just rip the band-aid off and let's see what we got i think again we, we talked a little bit about we want some really impactful moments for leia i think is one thing i've I've started to dwell on a little bit more of, of how they're going to handle this character and, and really resolve her ending, I think. And, and how does, how does that come to play? And I, I yeah. would really like to see that resolve in a satisfactory type of way, you know, as well as just see, again, we need this thing to come together somehow, some way let's, let's hopefully move past the disconnectedness conversations that we've had and, we, we fill in enough of the blanks where it feels like this was a complete story arc with these three movies in particular. And we've honored and addressed the past of what's come before it. And it, and it feels like a complete story, whether we like it or not, you know, beside the point, but did they attempt and did they on some level, were they able to achieve that? So I know that's not a prediction or anything, but that's, that's what I'm hoping for the most out of this set of, out of this movie in particular. Yeah. Um, well, I don't of, know that a lot I... of pew pew. Yeah. Yeah. Pew pews. So, Right. All right. Well, we're going to end the show there um, with this again. This is uh, you won't see or hear from us again until Friday when we come back to I think. Yeah, I think that's when we're going to record anyways. Uh, hopefully we'll get it out that Friday as well. So right. Jonesy and I will both be obviously seeing the movie uh, on Thursday. And I've got a I've got one slight correction. I completely overlooked this. You asked me if I was going to see the movie with anybody. I am going to see the movie. The first showing I'm going to see with Imperial Moonwalker from our Discord channel, who also is nice. over at the film appraisers. Um, he's a, a fellow Austinite, and we got together months ago, uh, right when tickets went on sale and decided we were going to go together, and I bought two tickets. So I will see the first showing with Imperial Moonwalker, so I'm looking forward to that. So apologies to you, Josh. Uh, and then after that... Um, the uh i've got another showing that night i've got one on friday and then one on saturday and one on sunday and a couple others but anyways uh we'll get together i think friday morning is what we talked about record that show try to get out to you friday and that'll be a raw reaction show um but yeah hit us up on twitter social media facebook wherever you want to do it call the hotline Uh, if you'd like if you're leaving the movie theater and you want to leave us a kind of your own you know, personal review or just, you know, hot take or how you're, how you're feeling emotions, that sort of thing. I'd love to hear it. I, I, it's, it's always intriguing what people walk out of the theater feeling like that first showing and how sometimes that can change, you know, both good, bad, or n- not really at all uh, with subsequent viewings of the movie. So we are interested to hear all that. So please feel free to share all that. And of course you can come on discord. We'll have a special channel set up for that for everybody to kind of start um, you know, laying out your grievances or <laughs> creating your sport groups or relishing in the moments and, and, uh, in the victories and, and all of that. So we'll have all that set up for you guys as well. All right. I guess that's it. I'm ready to watch this movie. If you are, we got anything else before we go? You know what? We're just going to do it the right way. May the force be with you, Albert, and everyone out there. And also with you. Okay. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Always. All right, guys. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care. You're still listening? Wow, that's amazing. Well, I'm here to give you the disclaimer. Normally we do a big, long, drawn-out disclaimer thing saying what's what and who's what and all that other stuff, but I think you guys kind of know that Lucasfilm and Disney have 
uh, no affiliation with us at all, uh, and we have none with them. Uh, we talk about Star Wars, which is their property and all that other good, fun stuff. Uh, but I think you can tell which is our stuff and which is their stuff. If you can't, well, then send a lawyer to send an email to me, and I'll be glad to chat with them. Other than that, you know what's what. So that's your disclaimer. 